it was a bit of a gamble because you're coming from Watford to Luton, they're arch rivals. You're trying to take over from Nathan Jones, who's, who's a huge figure at this football club and done such a good job here. So it was a bit of a risk, but um, yeah, I'm really pleased we took it now. And you'd have to be not normal if there wasn't just a little bit of satisfaction that you'd left Watford and you'd taken their arch rivals, as you mentioned, into the Premier League. Surely there was a, a little bit of karma going through your mind. It's, I think, I suppose, human nature. You want to, you know, you want to just do a good job first and foremost for the football club that you're representing, and um, I'm pleased that we were able to do that. But of course, there's an element of, um, you know, have that, you know, there is because, again, ego, um, you know, it's not nice getting sacked. It's not a nice feeling. There's embarrassment there. It's it's difficult. It could be toughy family. You know, there's a lot that's going on, especially then at that level. There's you know, a lot more media and, and stuff and coverage on it. And um, so, yeah, it was tough, but, yeah, it was a really good feeling. It was a nice, it, it, it was, a, there was an element of, um, yeah, you know, I'll show you. But I get, again, it's a, it's a team thing as well. So it's, it's not then just about me. It's about this amazing group of people that I'm working with. The staff are incredible and, and the players, that, that they're the ones that go over the white line and do it as well. So... Uh, recognising that it's a real team thing. How aware were you of the, the sort of Luton story and the, the unique nature of it, going all the way down to non-league and then getting themselves back up into the championship, which was a, a monumental achievement in the time they did it, let alone to have aspirations uh, of the Premier League? W were you fully aware of the history? Was that something that attracted you to, to come and try and take them into the Premier League and make that final step? I was aware of it, but then you become... You know, really aware of it when you when you join the football club, and um, these people are special, and and they deserve this. You know, this moment now that they're getting in the in the sunshine, and we can hope. You know, we hope that it lasts for a long, long time. As a result of all of that, were there tears shed in the celebrations after winning promotion? Yeah, there, there, I think there was some tears. It was really, we were really proud of what we'd achieved because, you know, you cover the the, the league. You know. You know the journey that the club's been on. You know how difficult the championship is and the competition. To finish third and then win the playoffs is, you know, I mean, if if, if we don't achieve anything else, if I don't achieve anything else now in my career, I'll, I'll be so proud of that. So proud of that. Um, when I was involved uh, at Blackpool, we did the same thing under Ian Holloway. You know, that was the moment then that I wanted to go into coaching, into management. That, that then, seeing what Ian Holloway had done with us and, and achieving that, uh, because I wanted to try and emulate that. So to be <laughs> stood there at Wembley looking around, once I knew locks was OK, and looking around at what it meant to all our fans, seeing my family up there celebrating as well, it was the most proud I've ever been, ever. Um, it's hard to really explain. Just looking at the, the sort of public perception of Luton as a football club, obviously we've all seen on social media the, the videos of fans entering the away end via somebody's back garden. There was a certain television pundit who was quite derogatory of Luton, and I think you reacted to that in your press conference. Is there a fine line between people praising the charm of this football club and maybe being a little bit patronising because you've earned the right to be in the Premier League? Well, we have. Like I said, we finished third and we won the playoffs, so we deserve to be here. Um... We are a smaller club, we know that. We know our stadium now. We know, you know, it, it's charming. It, the his, it's historical. It's brilliant for us. Everyone will have their opinion. I would be the same if I wasn't, you know, if I was outside this football club and think, well, you know, it's going to be hard for them. I get that. But I think there's ways in, in, in which you can then describe us and, you know, yeah, for someone to say they can't take us seriously because we maybe we haven't spent enough money or something like that, I just think is mad because I think in this day and age now, what, what are you supposed to do? You're supposed to spend 150 million, people will criticise you. You know, don't spend enough, people will criticise you. Is there like a happy medium? Do you need to spend about 60 or 70? And they're like, you know what, they're all right. They're, they're having a bit of a go, but they're being sensible as well. It's flipping bananas. And what are people talking about? You know, we've got a plan and we'll try and stick to that. And it's served us well for the last, you know, decade. Um... And we'll, try and, and we'll try and do that. If the worst was to happen, I don't want to talk, talk, and let, talk negatively, if the worst was to happen and we go down, no one's going to lose their jobs. You know? And this club's in a really good position to then attack it and try and go back up again. Now, don't get me wrong, I don't, as the manager of this football club, I want to make sure we stay here. I want to make sure we're competing at this level next season as well. Um, and we're progressing and moving the right way to try and do that. But 
to, you know, for people to think, well, you know, they've only spent 17 million or something like that. They're not even taking it seriously. And I, I don't get it. I don't get that. I think, pe I think because there's a plan there, that should be respected and go, do you know what? And let's hope they do do it because maybe there's another way to, to, to have success in football rather than, you know, chucking everything at it. Let's talk about this game against Spurs uh, at the weekend. Ange Postacoglu, someone who's made a pretty serene start to life in the Premier League. How impressed are you with him as a coach and how much of a culture shock do you think it will be for him bringing a team to Kenilworth Road? Really impressed with, with Ange, the start he's made. Is, it's not surprised me uh, at all. I think he's top. Um, you know, I love the way he comes across, love his honesty, really like his manner. Um, and he's got some brilliant players to work with and he's getting them right at it. Um, they are really intense, play a brilliant way. Very clear identity, which shows he's a very good coach. So, again, it doesn't surprise me. He's been successful everywhere he's been. Um, so, really looking forward to welcoming him and then, you know, trying to pit our wits against uh, against Tottenham. I think it's a, you know, it's a really, it's why, you, it's why we wanted to get promoted, isn't it? Let's be honest. The, these games are, they are amazing for us at Ken Tottenham Hotspur, Kenilworth Road. Oh, it's just, you know, it's really exciting. But we want to go and compete and compete well. Um, and uh, I'm confident that we will do. You know, the home games have been really tight for us so far. And I think well, we could have got more than just a single point out of the three games that we've had. But maybe this will be the one that will surprise a few people in.